Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Round three of the manufacturer series that we're currently doing with Porsche. Looking good in P6 at the moment. Potentially could improve on that, but there's a lot of quick boys, boys and girls in this manufacturer series for Porsche. So yeah, it's going to be tough, but we'll do our very, very best. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this track will work towards our car. If we can get in the lobby, of course. Get the fuck out of here! Yeah, the GT Sport service for me recently, they've just been an absolute disaster. Uh, but thankfully, we managed to get on the 520 slot. So let's jump straight into it then, and let's go into qualifying. And qualifying straight away is just an absolute cluster, as you can see. Uh, Sardinia Road C, I think it is. Don't, again, I might have got that wrong, so apologies if I have got that wrong. Um, but it's a short circuit, really, really good if you've got like a powerful Group 4 car. But it turns out, if you've got a low-powered Group 4 car, like myself, it is very, very difficult, it seems. And, uh, yeah, we try and latch onto the back here of Miyamu in front of us, just trying to get that slipstream. But even with that slip, because he's got the slipstream of the Spaniard in front of us, I'd already lost it within, you know, <laughs> a couple of seconds of uh, being behind him, which is just insane. But we go through the first corner. Probably where the Porsche is going to come into its own and actually going through the corners. There's only really three major breaking points. So we've done the first one already. Now this is the second one here. Nice and tight to the apex on the left hand side. But we didn't, I don't feel like I put enough power through. I think the car can handle a little bit better um, through that corner. So we'll have to risk it a bit more on the second attempt that we're going to have here. So yeah, still behind me. I still don't think we're in a slipstream. I think we're just, just outside of it. Breaking late. Uh, there's a curb on the right hand side I'm using as my braking indicator and then we'll get back onto the straight and that's the third and final braking zone of this whole track. Every lap really is under a minute and um, we're going to be, yeah, we're, ready, we're qualifying the softs in this. So we cross the line here, um, 56 free, absolutely nothing to brag about at all. But we go again. Um, I did get the slipstream me and me at the end there, but it just I just wasn't feeling confident. I wanted to go out again on some fresh tyres. So we do go out again, <laughs> and there's like a clash of three cars. However, one pulls off into the pit lane, and then another one on the left-hand side, and Miyamu, he's just going to just give up, essentially, and so does the Chevrolet as well. So I had the slipstream going up to the first corner, and then I kind of lost it. But we're going to see if we can absolutely nail this anyways. Uh, nailed the first breaking point beautifully there. The car really felt nice as we swooped into that first corner. Porsche is a great handling car, but brake horsepower-wise and just drill on oomph, it's just not there. Braking after 50 metre board, much tighter, much quicker. You can see we actually go a little bit wide there. That's probably about an inch perfect, to be honest. Going through the middle of the sector, four and a half temps up on our previous best, which is looking really, really tasty. Um, into fifth gear for this, just about. Again, braking as the curb um, ends on the right-hand side. Nice and tight through the exit. Keep it in second gear. Um, very hard if you put too much steering angle into this Porsche, the rear end does step out quite easily. So you've got to keep that under control. We haven't got a slipstream here. We're going to cross the line here. We're going to do a 55.769, which only puts us three temps off pole position, which I thought was really, really good. Eventually, um, once, once qualifying finished, we actually finished P7. But I feel like if we actually had slipstream for the end of that lap or throughout the middle sector and last, I think we could have got pole. I think we could have easily uh, done that because I think the, you know, the lines we took um, were, were brilliant, they were fantastic, exactly what we needed to do, but the car kind of lets down in a way with just its lack of oomph, like I keep saying, it's just, it's just nowhere. But we'll get this race underway then, 25 laps of Sardinia C, I believe. I'm going to put the brake balance to the rear by one, not too much, the car does get quite unsettled anyways, and you can see straight away, we started in the slipstream, but we're out of it. Uh, and the Ferrari behind me is looking eager, but he does the right thing here, instead of fighting me into the first corner, this is both us losing the slip. He lets me go, and thanks to my, um, thanks to a really good breaking point there, uh, we've managed to catch up with the guy up ahead. So one thing I want to quickly mention in this race is that it is 25 laps, and it's Group Four cars only. It's the manufacturer series, and there is a choice between soft and medium tyres. Okay, mandatory tyres are the mediums, but since the update on Gran Turismo Sport with pit stops actually taking as long as they should you lose an awful lot of time if you go in the pit. So the strategy for this one, surprisingly, is even though the soft tires are actually available to you, you need to use the medium. So everyone just starts on the mediums, okay? So that's why you're gonna see me start on the medium tires in this race. Everyone else is gonna do it. If you start on soft, you just lose way too much time. It's just utterly pointless. Now my race strategy for this one 
is just to stick with someone. It's as simple as that. I don't. This car's too slow in a straight line to be competitive here. So we've got to stick in the slipstream. We can't do anything else. If, if we lose the slipstream to anyone, we are just going to drop back. We've got absolutely no hope here. Every single car, I think, in this lobby has pretty much got more, <laughs> pretty more oomph to it. And it, they, they, were just, they were just, you know, set off into the sunset, the sunset. And there's nothing we can do. But so far, after one lap, we've managed to keep behind this, this guy in sixth, um, Orca. But you can see he's actually there's quite a large gap. Uh, to P5 already, which is quite frustrating um, because all I can do is stay behind him. I can't overtake him. If I overtake him, it will be utterly pointless because he'll just get me on the next lap and we'll keep fighting. The other thing as well, you're going to watch this here, so I'm super close to this guy here, right? But even with the slipstream and how long the straight is, I could not get close enough to give him a bump draft. There's nothing I could do. So we didn't have the advantage of working as a team because I couldn't help him, but he could help me. So, <laughs> as much as close as I was getting, there's nothing I could do. There's nothing I could do to help the chap in front of me. And I, I do feel bad, but I just couldn't do anything. But regardless, I stuck with him. Um, we're still in this train here. Nothing too much has changed, to be honest, as we go to lap six or seven. And, yeah, we're still, we're still with the Jag. But you can see he's got, we're getting a much closer now. Much closer. But as we get closer, I'm going to run wide here. And that is going to be enough for me to drop out the slipstream. And you're going to see the difference as soon as I'm out the slipstream. It's just, it's very dramatic. <laughs> it's very dramatic. I just go nowhere. So same break point as usual. Those worn medium tyres, you know, really start to come into play there. Um, rear end really stepping out and it's still doing it. A uh, little bit of contact with the Portuguese guy, I think, here. But we're side by side. So you're going to see the power difference between the Porsche and the Ferrari here. Um, he's just going to pull alongside me and by the end of the straight, he'll, he'll have easy. Um, there's no point fighting it. There's no point fighting it at all. So he's going to go past. Uh, he's going to slide to P7. I've now dropped down to P8. A little bit of contact there. Um, just came across me there. Um, and I should probably should have braked a little bit earlier. But, you know, nothing too crazy. Anyways, lap 10. Going through this left hand that someone has gone off. And this is really awkward, this situation. So I'm going to pause it here. Uh, this guy in front of me, uh, Jake's1882. Now he's ghosted, but he's on the racing line. And there's nowhere for myself or the Ferrari. We've just got to hope and pray. And I just... I just I was so distracted by I hit the wall and then I'm on the inside uh, and there's nowhere for me to go. There's nowhere for me to go. It was really, really awkward. Um, there's nothing I could do to have to avoided um, hitting uh, Jake there because I was on the inside uh, and there was just no space. It was just it was the car on the left and the and the wall on the right. There was nowhere for me to go. It was frustrating. It was my fault for hitting the wall on the inside. There's no doubt about that. But where he, he's ghosted, um, I think the Jag got through and then I just yeah frustrating it was so annoying uh, and then that dropped me down to p8 again so we did gain a position uh, but we've lost it to high and die um, yeah so umf longer is now taken p7 uh, and we've um, been demoted again to p8 so i was hoping because the high and die probably isn't the greatest in a straight line we'd have enough oomph and slipstream to maybe overtake him or push him along but we didn't no we didn't but i'll tell you what has got loads of um, power and that's the jag the jag uf type one of the fastest cars uh, in group four at the moment i believe and he overtook myself with ease no pressure whatsoever uh, and longer as well so yeah um there's a guy actually goes to car on left hand side here another jag f type erm um, borger so he's gone off somewhere maybe a bit of contact up ahead and that puts me back up to p8 now so uh, we've only well we've got a net gain or a net loss of one so it's not too bad i was quite happy but stupidly look at that um i got completely distracted completely distracted by looking at the front of that Hyundai far too much and I, now I'm in no man's land I've got nowhere to go um, and it's only going to take a lap or two um, for VLX Sparks to catch up with me again got nowhere to go no brake horsepower just nothing and he overtakes me no point fighting it uh, and that's going to drop us down into P10 now which is um, yeah really just a just a frustrating race this felt like this this race felt like for me like it was impossible like there's nothing because if I didn't stick with anyone I'd just drop back so I couldn't feel like I could progress at all because even when I was in the slipstream I couldn't push anyone along so I couldn't help anyone people could help me but I couldn't make them go any quicker because I wasn't even quick enough in the slipstream to push someone along it was agonizing this race for me in this Porsche I just I felt so useless and these stupid little mistakes that I was making just made it 10 times worse and yeah Hopefully, though, as you can see, we're going to stay on board now for the rest of this race. The tire wear is going to come into play. Now, we make a lovely move up the inside of this um, 
third breaking point here. We got the move done, but once again, you're going to see this. I'm in. I've got the slipstream of the high end die, um, but they start fighting, and then the VLX Sparks is on my left hand side in his Aston Martin V8. Nice, beautiful V8 engine. I think I've got this Porsche's got a straight six, I think. Um, and yeah, the V8 just destroys me. But you can see yeah, the, the gap actually between first and tenth here is really close. Only 3.5 seconds between us all, 3.2, 3.3. So there's a lot of fighting, so there's still opportunities to be had here. So maybe if P7 and the Hyundai can catch up with the top six, it could get a little tasty. Now these guys, I thought they were going to go side by side into this left-hander, but the guy in the Jag um, just makes a mistake there and that gains us a position, so that's good to see, so that's one position, so that's P9, it's not too bad, I would think I would, I would take a top 10 here, considering the massive deficit we have, the massive disadvantage we've got for being in the Porsche, fingers crossed there'll be a track where this Porsche really comes into its own, but this is certainly not one of them, so um, one lap to go after we cross the line, you can see it's really fighting now, just two and a half seconds between myself and P9 and PR1, the Italian first, you see there's a massive um, incident there. Jake's once more being involved there. I'm not sure what quite happened there. Maybe he got taken out. He must have done. It was on the straight. There's no way um, you know, anything else could have happened really. These guys are fighting all over the place. The guy in the Hyundai has got absolutely mugged uh, on that corner. Now I'm going to do the, the smart thing here. I went to the left hand side just to you know, make sure I've got the inside for this next left hander here um, and just basically leave him nowhere to go so he has to back out. So that's put us up to P7 now. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, really good to see. Now these guys are going to be fighting down here. Any Anything we can take here, I will take. Oh, you see VLX Parks has hit the wall there. Okay, so we could potentially go up to P6 here. Side by side going through here. Just hit the same breaking point. But I break way late and I've had to go to the right to avoid smashing into the back of the guy in the Audi TT. And unfortunately, that was enough for me to go wide and just drop back. And that's going to uh, demote me back to P9, unfortunately. Which is gutting. Absolutely gutting. But... Yeah, P9 in the end, folks. P9 in the end. And, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time on my hands to go again. So I do apologise. This is the only run I had. But I will take those points. Honestly, I just felt so useless in this race. I had nowhere to go. Let me know in the comments if you had a low-powered car for this race as well and how you got on. Pfft, just no no hope for me, I felt, in that one. <laughs> so only 208 points. Uh, and the next morning, um, we're, we've we dropped down to P7. So we only lost one position. Uh, it's only counting our best results at the moment, so that one is absolutely fine. Now, if we go to our rank as well, so first for local area, seventh for Porsche, and 102nd in EMEA. But uh, yeah, not too bad. We'll we'll get past that round. There's nothing much we could do there. It felt like it was an impossible, impossible race for us in that car. But yeah, we'll move on swiftly to round four. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe. If you are new around here, as always, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care, guys. Ta-da.